Hey everyone, it's Lynn and Mary. We're giving a recap of what happened. We're on our way back to Dallas from Austin and uh, it started on Monday, so we didn't get to watch this testimony, but um, wait, was that Monday? Uh, yeah, the testimony was Monday yeah. on Title Three. Yeah. It was the Appropriations <laughs> House. I don't know uh, what day this. Yeah, the House hearing on Appropriations Title Three, which is funding for mm -hmm. education. And we were um, on our way down, and so we, um, well, actually, I, I heard it, but didn't watch it, so I couldn't see who was saying it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. We, I wish we had gotten there, and so Lynn and I went back and watched it Monday night. We spoke in Dripping, um, and not in Dripping Series, we spoke Georgetown. in Georgetown Monday night, and... Um, so we can put a link in the comments here, in, or in the, in the description of this video, of the hearing that you'll have to go back and watch. After about an hour is when he's, is when the good stuff started ha yeah. starts it, happening. 53 minutes in, actually. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, so um, at the hearing, they have, you know, only invited testimony, which is, exactly. again, tends to be super frustrating for us. And then they did have the commissioner come before... Um, the committee, and there are several new people on the committee that, that you know, did great. Um, Van Deaver, who used to be on um, the education committee, was uh, is the chair of the appropriations committee. Uh, for but he wasn't time. really doing the interrogating. It was some of the other members. Right? Yeah, he doesn't ever talk a whole lot, but uh, yeah, it was mostly some of the other members. And we'd have to go back and, and watch it to tell you, because again, we um, have listened more intently than, than watched, but um, they, they started out by asking him some questions about some discrepancies in the growth in the agency, the growth in the cash in, and we have put out a PowerPoint presentation showing the growth in uh, the budget of the Texas Education Agency and how the growth in the budget of the Texas Education Agency has increased by 37% since the, this commissioner, Mike Morath, has been uh, on board. And ironically, when they were asking him, they were talking about numbers of increase based on the increase in values of homes. So basically the tax Yeah, when increase. your taxes go up, your property taxes go up, well, the value of your home has been going up too, but the, the taxes, so that is more revenue for the state. And so what this legislator was talking about is calling Morath out because they're taking in more money at the state level at the end, yet it's not returning back to the districts. And so he the, he questioned him, but so the TEA budget, the spending has gone up, the hires have gone up, and then the academic performance of the district, I mean of the, the state, has gone down under his watch long before the pandemic. So we've been putting out this PowerPoint, talking to all these groups across Texas, and we believe that this message is starting to penetrate those in Austin. And so hearing him, I mean, it was almost verbatim of what we say in our presentation. Yeah. Yeah, and so he's basically asking the asking the commissioner like, "Where's the money, dude? Show shows like, ah, where's it going?" Yeah, and, and the and commissioner, blah, 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 you know, he gives yeah, a lot of mumbo jumbo uh, things around. And you know, he's a slippery, great speaker. I mean, he really manipulates language um, super well. I mean, he is a smart man, and and he's not um, as smart as everyone thinks he is. But he, he's yeah, he, he is he is a smart man. It's too bad it's not being used for good. For good. Um, but the interesting thing was they literally held him accountable. They said, no, we are going to ask the questions the way we want to ask the questions and we want the answers. And then, Well, and one of them said even, he's like, I, I've asked you for this. Your people will not give me this information. And he's like, oh, we'll get that back to you. And he's like, yeah, you said that the last two times. Yeah. And he said, yeah. when, when am I going to see it? Like, with this hearing, we've got a deadline. And I forget what the timeline is. But he's basically saying, dude, we don't have time to wait for you and your people to give me this data that I've been asking for for months. Yeah, they have year. to write the budget, and, and he can't do it effectively because Without the commissioner's it. not, I mean, with knowledge. But the thing that I really, you know, I have great sympathy, or empathy is the correct word, with the frustration they have. But this is what we experience. We experience it at the local level. We experience it at the state level. We cannot, the people, we the people are not able to get factual information, whether it's curriculum or whether it's 
where's the money going? I mean, open you government. cannot. It doesn't, it's, it, it's not open government. Yeah. It's, it's, a lot of this is being concealed, and we're being denied the open records requests. Uh, in fact, uh, last night it was kind of fun to meet with some other people in the, who are in the education uh, in that whole world in Austin and they, we have different um, different people are pulling different uh, information requests and we're all getting different things and we can compare notes sometimes they'll release more things to some of these some people yeah lobbyists and people and then they you know they won't give you know Joe Q public anything uh, but right. yeah so okay so and, and um, talk about the so the Leshlo thing go ahead okay. on that. well okay so um, there um, so then at the the um, hearing where commissioner is being grilled about uh, without the name being used they were grilling him about uh, curriculum and I think this is really important all teachers need to know this and hear this the conversation the question that was posed to him was posed would it be easier if we gave the teachers exactly what they were supposed to teach in other words can, is, is it can, easier if we have a canned product and tell them and so that they're not teachers anymore yeah. they just deliver and stand and are and you know not even instructors they just the hand figures. out the, the thing do the worksheet turn it back in you're just a monitor you just monitor what they're doing uh, this is so devaluing and I think it's consistent with what continues to happen to teachers they're undervalued nobody is respecting them it's reflected in how they've bloated the administrations and put all the money into the administrations and teachers are underpaid um, well and that's a careful thing because they're the, the new teachers are not underpaid that's that compression of the the older more yes. seasoned teachers they're not making there's there's very little between what the new teacher is making and what the the seasoned teacher is making so it's not that teachers aren't paid well it's that those who've been in the system longer are not they, they haven't made adjustment uh, for that so we, that's you have to be careful saying the teachers aren't paid because the new ones are paid when I got to college my friends were making 18 to 24 thousand dollars yeah now they starting teacher salary is much higher than that but those who've been in the system a long time are getting they it's don't get brought up to right. inflation and all those so, things. Yeah. But I would still contend that the teachers are underappreciated by the, at the state level. Yes. You know, that the they state level underappreciates it. The parents do, but it's that's not being translated at the state level. And they're allowing all this bloat in the administration. That's exactly what we see at the TEA. It's so bloated. I mean, there's the waste, the waste, the waste. Well, and it's gone, he's gone from, Marath has gone from 919 employees to 1,200 employees oh, since we pulled that record now. in yeah. 2022. And since then, we, we guess he's probably hired 50 to 100 more people. Right, right. Then. Yeah, we should probably redo that and see what, how much yeah. in just a year. But anyway, in the hearing, so they asked him about that and he, you know, he affirmed that. So that was just kind of a sneak peek that in fact, what we've been saying and what we've been hearing is correct, that he is at the Capitol pushing to get a statewide curriculum. And that's what is happening with the social studies is this statewide curriculum. So that was another thing. And then finally, um, they, they, they ask him about uh, what is going on at the TEA. And what is this about a member of the Texas Education Agency called a mother? And, um, you know, they, they soft shoot around it. And he said, so oh, yeah. For, the, for those who don't know, so there was a Texas Tribune released the, uh, well, we, Mary and I released through a, one of our ticket uh, videos, we released the audio of a parent in, um, a, in a Texas ISD whose child, the, the Texas Education Agency knew about the problems that they were having. And they did not respond. Uh, I and, mean, yeah. months. I mean, absolutely months. But when they needed, for the governor's speech writer, they needed a story of a parent who was disgruntled, whose ISD did not give the services they needed. Um, they, they were going to use it to push school choice, and they needed a disgruntled parent. They wanted so, the parent probably, I mean, because they did get another parent, but they probably were going to invite that parent to come and be a part of the state of the state address where he was trying to sell and of or course maybe the event that was last night in uh, conroe could have been for that too we don't yeah, know what yeah i mean just for. i mean he's on a, a he's dog on a and tour. pony show out trying to sell vouchers right. um so, so instead of doing their job at the tea yeah. he's out 
uh, doing the bidding for the governor, trying to find disgruntled parents instead of fixing the system that we've been asking them to help us fix. So this was this was brought up. Um, the Texas Tribune released the audio, so all it's all a buzz in Austin about this audio, and um, and then uh, it was brought up at the hearing at this education. They uh, asked him, hearing. "Is he trying to hurt our ISDs?" They point blank ask him. And of course he said no, and then they manipulated and said no, that he was trying to help the mother. And I just need to make the, set the record straight. We know the people that are involved in this. We know that they've been asking the state for help for months. I mean, we're going on nine months and it's about bullying. The parents have taken their child out of the school so the child would be safe. But you have to look at, I know from going across the state that there are so many complaints at the state level over bullying and they just sit there and then what they're not saying is that, that in the audio he says oh well the reason your complaint was denied and it didn't get moved forward and investigated was because you didn't use the quote magic unquote words. magic words well hello tell us all what the magic words are because if we need to know magic words in order to protect children from being bullied, I mean... Or to get the services they need. Or to get the services need. they need for special what ed. Are the, what are the magic words? We need to know that. We don't want to be told, oh, well, you didn't use the magic words. Get on television and say, here are the magic words. If you, are, if you have a child who needs help, we will help you. But instead, it was for political manipulation. And now when they're being called on the carpet about it at the Capitol, not only is Marath lying about it, but Steve Leshlo is also lying about it. So they're spinning. See, they got caught. And they. Steve Leshlo has issued a statement. He apologized, sort of. Sorry, not sorry. But he, he also, um, the, the agency is covering for him. And a lot of people have been asking, you know, are, is his head going to roll? Or uh, yeah. what, what, have they taken care of it? it was there any kind of, um, did he, was he reprimanded for it? They're, they're asking the questions and without being able to talk about his personnel file. But Mary and I drew the conclusion he was doing what they told him to do. So they couldn't fire him for doing what he was told to right. do. He's a government employee. So we think that, that that's, uh, we suspect that that's why he still has his job is because he was actually doing what he was told. I mean, if the governor and, and the, the and your boss, the TEA commissioner tells you to do this and then you go do it, they can't fire him for doing that. So it's still wrong. So they're doing a, you know, a faux apology and then they're spinning it, making it sound like, no, 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 that's not how it happened with the parent. Yeah, it is how it happened. And then we've talked to a couple of legislators yesterday, found out that Leshula was going to meet with uh, the, the, the Democrat, Democrat caucus. caucus. That they asked him three times, together. the Democrat Jeez. caucus, uh, that they invited him three times, and he um, he denied the first two times he wouldn't come and speak to them. Mm -hmm. And so it took the third invitation that he came to speak to them. It was funny. I was sharing this with um, one of our um, directors of Families Engaged, and she said, he doesn't have a choice. If he gets called to testify at the Capitol, he has to go. And I was Government. like, and I was like, oh yeah, okay. So finally, and that was this morning, and we asked, could we attend? And we were told no. And we know several other people who asked no, if they could attend, invited. and they said no. So we don't really know what was done in that hearing. However, yeah. um, we think it was just you know providential for sure. We encountered two people several times that were going to be in the hearing and they said oh well tell us you know the other side of it so we did we shared the other side of it that services are being denied and um and that you know this phone call was not in any way to help the parent that that this had been in there it had been the parents had expected help in september and october november and december and they had nothing and that the complaint was closed and then um, when he needed something, he called the parent. And then the other thing is, you know, they said, oh, well, he, people are saying, oh, well, poor guy. He didn't know he was being recorded. Seriously? Poor guy. He didn't yeah, know he was being recorded. If you're a special, a parent of special needs children, you're told to always record everything, always document everything. You have to check all, dot all your I's and cross all your T's. And that's just one way because they will not do what they say they're going to do or they'll tell you something that's not true so that parents are always encouraged to record that for documentation they as a state employee they should assume that that's happening i 
I mean, and like regardless of whether, I mean, what if it hadn't have been recorded, then they would go around and say that never they happened. Never happened. They would have, right. they would have denied that it ever happened, and that that is so wrong, because the, we still have a child out there that is not getting serviced, and then we have them saying, oh, this is why we need choice and we need vouchers, is because that's the only way for that parent to get help for her child who is being bullied. That's not a solution. That is not a Especially solution. Especially for the majority no. of kids, and so it, we we just find. So now, of course, the left is, and, and you know, those who are, um, you know, blind, blindly trusting and, and supporting the schools with no scrutiny, scrutiny, they're, of course, chomping at the bit on this audio, but uh, because they know that this is a great tool to use against the voucher scheme, which, um, well, you know, the whole point in exposing this deal is so that, that anybody who's inside the schools, that that they would be held to account to do their jobs in the ISDs, but also at the state level. So when parents do have to go up to level three grievances and, and uh, fighting at the local level to get services for their kids, then if you go all the way to the TEA and they're not taking, I mean, where, what's your recourse as a parent when the districts are lawyering up and the TEA is not, you know, they're playing politics, not doing their job. So we don't care about the left, right stuff. We just want to expose what's happening in the schools and, and get parents the resources they need to get their kids the resources they need. Well, and again, if this goes to one of the things that we are asking a call for our legislators to do is to, you know, restructure the Texas Education Agency 100%. So please... And audit it. We, we need we have a, to audit the TEA yes, we so went, we understand where the money's going. Absolutely. We went and asked. We we're so encouraged by the questions that were asked at the appropriations hearing and that we went by each one of their offices and left a note and we're just saying thank you for holding accountable and investigating where is the money going where is the money going we need to find out where is the money going and not only that in your own school district if your school district is a recapture or a robin hood school district you have the right to find out where your funds are going are they taking money from your school district to to fund a private public partnership charter like a charter school, school? If they are, you're not obligated to do that. That was actually asked during the hearing. Yeah. The, the legislator was so clever. The way he asked Marath is, is this money that's being recaptured, is that funding uh, charter schools? And we, and years ago, uh, some of us in Dallas, uh, we, we, we drew that conclusion that it may not be a straight line, a direct line from recapture to the charters, but a roundabout way, the amount of money that is collected statewide at the time was like $2.8 um, That the, the same amount, almost the same amount, like $2.7 billion, went to charter schools. So you could draw the conclusion that that recapture money is actually just, uh, it's a shell game. It goes directly into the privatization schemes with these real estate deals with charter schools. Now the, the conservatives always think the charters are great because it's a free market, you know, you hold, uh, you, you lift all boats by putting in their competition, blah, blah, blah. Charters actually, if you look at the data, they don't outperform our crappy public schools. So there, you, there's, it's not a, it's not a solution. They have to do the same star tests, the same standards. They have uncertified teachers. Uh, so charters really, and anecdotally, there are a couple of them that are better, um, a handful of them that are better than the school next door, but uh, statewide, they're not better. So anyway, okay, we probably need to wrap that up today. Yeah, we do. Okay, so we're gonna drop a link into the bottom of this. It shows you who all is on the House uh, Appropriations Subcommittee for Title III so that you can reach out to every one of them and just ask them to please call for an audit of the Texas Education Agency and that you as a recapture district or you as a taxpayer have a right to know where the money is coming from and that the Texas Education Agency must be held accountable to a return on the investment and where is the money going. Thank you.